So today we're climbing up Sierra Negra, which is like the biggest volcano in the whole of the Galapagos and one of the biggest calderas in the world. The people are already late to come pick us up, so that's a good start. Um, it's our last day on Isabella and then tomorrow we're going to Christabel for the last five days and then we'll be going home. But yeah, hopefully they'll come soon because it's... We've got up early for this, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, sick weather light. Okay guys. We're walking now, it's like 8k there and 8k back and there's two volcanoes you see. There's Sierra Negra and El Chico. Um, it's actually quite warm in it despite the drizzle. Um, this is what the path's like. And it's only 1100 meters above sea level too, so shouldn't be too bad. We've walked 6k and we've got another two but it's all very downhill. This is to the El Chico volcano. Um, there's still too much fog to see the Sierra Negra which is annoying but yeah Lewis running off from the Asper. This is the viewpoint of the north of the island. This is Elizabeth Bay here is the name of it and then you can kind of see the land in the north of the island which is cool. Lava rock is very light, it's not oh, heavy. Yeah. It's the reason is because the gas, when coming underground, they produce many pores in the basaltic lava rock, and now it's very light. Many it's so cool, all this yeah. rock. Right, I had to mute all of this bit because it was just so windy, but I was just explaining about the rock and how the orangey rock is older and the black is newer from the 2018 eruption, I think. Um, and yeah, I was just pointing out how the formations of it was cool and you could see how the lava had been flowing, which me and Lewis both thought was really cool. These are sulfur deposits. Kind of smells like year nine science lesson <laughs> hi it's me again so here i was just explaining how volcan chico gets its name because it's lots of little volca volcanoes that all collapsed in on each other and that's what you can see so if you look at isabella island it's the shape of a seahorse and it's because it's loads of volcanoes so you can see one there that's like the head of it and then the clouds covering them but there's like five volcanoes that make up the whole island which is really cool and this little out bit here, like the bit that looks lower down, is from the last eruption in 2018. And then that over there is Fernandinha Island. It's beautiful. Can I have a little snack now? Got a little pet lunch with us. Yeah, we're just walking back now. We get to go to some viewpoints. It's just up there, the caldera. It's gone very hot. The quiet Lewis's hat. So before she was saying that the lava, like it's not a big explosion with pyroclastic flow and everything, but it seeps out and the gases push it up over there to where we were before. Looks amazing. This is the taxi. Yeah. So we're back now, we've just had a brew and a little bit of scram, um, it's very sunny so we're going to go to the beach for our last afternoon here, um, the walk was good actually, I enjoyed it but I'm knackered, but you can't have a nap in the Galapagos, well you can but it's better to do it on the beach isn't it with loads of sea lions, so we're going to head there, what time is it, 10 to 3. So we've got a couple of hours before it goes dark. 
all our mates are here having a swim, but I don't think we're going to swim this afternoon. Just want to sunbathe. Coming to say hello. We've moved to this little pier and we're just going to sit here and watch the sunset. So we were just on like that pier thing that I showed and I was chatting to this woman who, she was Australian but she's lived here for like six years. And I was asking them about what it was like during Covid and it's just mad like compared to at home. She said that her and her baby didn't leave the house for 10 weeks which like obviously a lot of people at home didn't. But I was so under the impression that here, um, after like they stopped flights and everything and cases would have dropped that it would have just been normal because how would it have got onto the island? Um, and she said that there was food shortages and obviously no one was working because so many people just tour guides and run tour companies and things. Um, what else? Yeah, and she was saying that it was in like January of this year, there was still like no one else here. But that's when it's their summer and she said the beaches were just so quiet and like even though it was a really hard year for all the locals they could still just go and enjoy the island for themselves which i thought was nice but she said that now it's not even back up to nearly 20 percent of the normal tourist rates which i think is just mad like we've maybe come at one of the best times possible because it's still pretty quiet but there's still people around which is nice but i can't imagine being here and it being really Oh, I've just got the news notification that Britney Spears' conservatorship is, has been terminated. Buzz in, free Britney. Um, but yeah, I can't imagine being here when it's like really busy. Yeah, I don't know, just having thoughts. We've come for tea again, um, and I don't think I actually showed. This is the market of the island, and there's just little food things. We've ordered the tuna and the guahu, which don't know what it is. He said it's a long fish. I think it's Dorado, maybe. But hopefully it'll be good. And then our boat leaves at five tomorrow. So be home to bed to pack. Home. home to bed to pack, home to pack, and then to bed. 